I'm Basil Carrier. Today I'm going to show you 10 easy to set up activities that you can use to begin a social studies lesson. First up is 18 questions. This is a nice easy activity to set up. All you need is a photograph of an interesting item from the time period you're studying. For example, if you're studying life from the 1960s, you might use this photograph of a portable record player. Students need to ask three each of the who, what, where, why, when, and how questions. For example, who would own one of these? Where would you use it? How much did it cost? And so on. Artifacts are a great resource for studying the lives of people in the past. For this activity, you need some photographs of artifacts from the group of people you're studying, and you can easily get these from online museums. Students are asked to make generalizations about these people based on these artifacts. These generalizations can then be proven or disproven through further research. You're probably familiar with mind mapping. This activity is a variation on it. Once again, you just need one good photograph and students are asked to mind map the information they can see in the photograph. This activity works best if you can display a large version of the photograph using a data projector. Picture disclosure requires the students to guess what is hidden in a photograph. You just need one suitable photograph on the topic you're studying, and this activity can easily be set up in PowerPoint by revealing a new part of the photograph in each slide, as is shown here. Ask a question requires students to suggest questions that they could ask someone. It uses a photograph of a person from a particular culture, time period, or affected by a global issue. Here, for example, is a photograph of a girl living in West Bengal in India. Due to drought and water scarcity, she often must survive on no more than two litres of water per day. Here are some questions a student might ask her. Speech bubbles, once again, requires just one good photograph of two or more people. Students are asked to suggest what the people in the photograph might say to each other. Here, for example, are two boys working in a factory in the early 1900s and some suggestions of what they might say. Captioning is a good activity for revising information the students have already learned. Using a suitable photograph, have the students write a caption for it. An important thing to remember about captions is that they should not just state the obvious. A good caption adds additional information to that which can be seen in the photograph. I spy is a good activity for younger students. Use a photograph related to your study topic, name a letter of the alphabet, and have students identify anything beginning with that letter. This activity encourages students to carefully analyze a photograph for information. It also helps if you can project the photograph up on a screen so the students can easily see the details in it. Short stories and picture books are a great way to interest students in the topic of a lesson. Aim for a story that takes no more than five to 10 minutes to read. You can then develop activities that relate to the story in some way. Lastly, consider YouTube videos as a suitable way to start a lesson. There are a lot of very good short three to five minute videos that are a great lesson starter. Whether it be a folk tale, uh, it might be a true story about children facing a crisis, or it could just be fascinating facts about the way people lived in the past. So thanks for watching.